I want to take a picture of it. So just bear with me for a minute. Uh, I'm going to stand back here. I don't you know, I usually do this, but this is a pretty boring picture. Can everyone do like a peace sign or something like that? <laughs> Very good. Thank you. So that's now on the internet. It's on YouTube. Um, accessible to anyone. No, I didn't really do that. But anyway, it proves a pretty good point. At the moment, we have a mobile device in our pocket that can, can do all sorts of things. Connect with the internet. Um, be a tool to use in the classroom that is really, really powerful. So I want to share my experiences as a teacher, my enthusiasm, hopefully I can get that across, uh, about how it can be used for good. And my key message here is that it can be used to engage and to change the way we teach. So that's what I'm going to try and get across. I think it's also pretty important to point out that, as Paul pointed out, that I am a teacher. I teach a full-time load uh, as PE, outdoor ed, a little bit of IT in there as well, strangely they've been pushed into that sort of um, area. But at the same time, I understand that when you work in a school, there's so many other things that you need to be aware of, like um, problems with budgets, definitely with our school, um, all the other little hoops and jumps that you're going to get through. So hopefully I can convey some of those things across to you about how that I was able to get through those. Uh, and hopefully you can get some inspiration about looking at mobile learning in the classroom when we um, get back to your schools, hopefully. Start with a pretty interesting picture here. Um, this is my friend. Looks very unique. Something that we never ever saw in our history. Uh, caveman sitting at a computer. I would say you probably agree. With him. Does he look uncomfortable? He does. Doesn't really know what's going on. Like not really um, very good there with the um, mouse and the keyboard. But the strange thing is, we actually see this quite a lot. Yeah. See quite a lot of parallels between the picture that I just put up there and this guy now. I think we weren't meant to sit at a desktop. I don't think we were meant to use a keyboard. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't think we were meant to use a mouse. And, and hopefully, um, we're starting to move away from those things. It's not really a natural experience. I reckon we started out a bit more like this. We certainly did um, roam around. Maybe we didn't look like that. But our tools were the things that we used. Um, and we were always on the go. Now, you look at kids these days, and they start out moving and, and, and being around and outside and then we try and bring them back in into, into rooms later on. I think that today, our tool might be the mobile device. Not necessarily the iPhone, I'm talking about any mobile <coughs> device, uh, but I think it has the potential to be as important as some of the tools that um, our little friend here was using back in the day. The really exciting thing about it, and I think, is a mobile learning tool actually gives us the potential to have our classroom anywhere. So we can be outside, and we can use that as our learning environment. Now, sure, we've been able to do that for years uh, without digital technologies, but we can do some really cool things with digital technologies in the outdoors, okay, by the very fact that they're now accessible. No longer do we have to be in a computer lab that we can't book into because of, there's only one in the school. Uh, we've got the capacity to, to be anywhere, and I think that's the point I'm trying to get across. Every subject has the potential to be mobile, for learning to occur, um, all the time, no matter where the student is. Okay? And I think that's true for every subject, regardless of just PE. So, firstly, I think it's pretty important that we have a look at um, just a few figures. I think it's a keynote, so I've got to put in a few statistics. That's generally what they do. Um, but I think there's a really important one here. In year 2000, about 1 in 10 people owned a mobile phone in the entire world. Now, if I was doing this keynote in year 2000, <laughs> Well, it wouldn't have been, because it would have been in year nine, but if I was doing it, I would have been talking about desktop computers, probably, and the, the power of those devices and what you could do in a, in a room. Flash forward nine years, and you see that six out of ten people now have access to a mobile device or a mobile phone. Now, that number is only going to continue to grow when we think about Moore's Law. Now, hands up if you're familiar with Moore's Law. Price drops. So we have a, an increase in computational power and a decrease in cost. It makes them more affordable, more accessible. So we have a look at our graph here. Oh, you can read that okay. This shows mobile phones per person. Remember, this isn't including other types of mobile devices, just mobile phones. There's probably more than this. We've got countries there like Russia that have 1.3 mobile phones per person. We have us there that have you know, about the same number of mobile phones as we do people. The thing that really baffles me is something like Somalia, they have about one third of their population with a mobile phone or some mobile device. Yet they're on the news at the moment 
They don't have water, they don't have food, but they have three quarters of their population with access to some sort of mobile device. Pretty amazing. So it does show that as technology advances and as the price comes down, things become more affordable. We have a look at some of the countries like China and so on. There's nearly half the population there with access to a mobile phone. Um, these are the countries that didn't actually have textbooks. Well, they didn't have all the other pieces of equipment. They skipped everything and they've gone straight to a mobile device. So looking at that, it's a pretty clear indicator that this is where society is heading. That's just the impression that I get when I look at it. To make it pretty clear about how important I think it's become in my life uh, and in our students' lives, uh, if I did the same thing with them, I'd probably get some similar results. I'm going to take you through my day. And this is a day I had two weeks ago, um, and I called it a mobile day. It was, it was just something I looked back in hindsight and thought to myself, you know, I did quite use my phone quite a lot that day. Um, is that a good thing? Maybe not. Uh, but it certainly had really, really positive effects on my work for that particular day. Start off at 6.45 in the morning and the alarm goes off and I get up, usually pretty red-eyed, and the first thing I usually do is I check my email and there's usually a few emails for that night that have come through and I start thinking about you know, what I've got to do for that day. Flash forward five minutes later and if I'm in a good mood, I've got my shoes on, I'm going outside, I'm going to go for a run around the lake. That happens every day. No, definitely not. <laughs> I put that one in there just to show you that it can happen, but some days, <laughs> some days I do go for a run in the morning at 6 a.m. And an application that I love, um, it's, it's called RunKeeper. Put your phone in your pocket, it tracks you where you go, um, and shows you how fast you ran and so on. So it also sends out a message to Facebook that people can, if they're up at 6.50 in the morning, can watch where I'm running, which, <laughs> which is pretty cool. But anyway, it is still here. By 6.50 a.m., that's the third interaction I've had with my mobile device, and I'm not really trying to do it. This is just things that I do in my life. The other one on the right-hand side there, I've got music playing. Very, very important in, um, when I'm trying to run. I um, so don't hear myself breathing and so on. But four interactions by 6.50 in the morning. By 7.30, um, I've probably checked Twitter at that stage um, and maybe got a few tweets back from people about things from the day before. And I've got, a, I've got the weather there as well. Um, by by 7.30. going to be a really good day, so that sort of informs me about where I'm going for that class. Now, I reckon if we, at this stage in the morning, if we did the same thing with our students, we'd probably find that they've had some experiences with a mobile technology, whether it's through their parents or whether it's through um, their own devices as well. 8am, I get to school, and I've started to manage what I'm doing for the day. The left-hand side is my Dropbox that has all my resources in it, and I'm actually using that to um, have my worksheets and all the stuff I'm doing for that particular session. So everything that I do on this computer is linked to my phone uh, and I move around with that phone rather than my computer. By 9am, I've used my phone for attendance, that little green bubble at the top, and I'll probably check my emails again. And I've used an application called Sprint Timer with my Year 7s on this particular day. It turns your phone into a complete photo finishing um, app, basically like they do for the Olympics. So you can actually take a full-on strobe effect of athletes crossing the line and get the split second that they do it. Really amazing. When the whistle goes off, it actually starts the timer as well. So we've now got full 100% functional um, professional timing in a school from a phone. So pretty amazing. The students love it when they get their photo finishes sent to um, themselves by email. Probably looks like when you're sitting there now that I walk around like this with my phone and I'd like to do anything else but you know, look at the world. But all, most of these experiences are happening without me really being aware of them um, because they are so accessible now. You know, I can quickly grab it out of my pocket and I can use it really, really easily. By 11 a.m. I've checked my email, I'm sorry, done my attendance again, and my year 12s are doing some fitness testing um, with those two applications there. By 1.20 on this 